friends, I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. And I just want to say real quick, it looks like 40% of you guys that are actually watching aren't subscribed just yet. But if you could do me a big favor and smash that subscribe button, that would be super cool. And also stay tuned towards the end of the video as I have a special guest on here today. And I think you're really going to enjoy him. I never thought anything like this would have happened to me. Tonight that might have changed. I live in a rural area north of the UK. About 20 minutes outside of the village I live in is a large complex of abandoned buildings. I haven't ever been able to get a straight answer on what these used to be. Some say an old farm, others say it was a RAF, UK Air Force Base. Either way, it's a cool place to explore and any kid's dream. I'm older now, 18 and male but I practically grew up here, spending many summers at this place with my groups of mates. We're all older now, so we don't go anymore. I mentioned how many times I've been to the demonstration how comfortable I am with this place. Any creepy feelings usually associated with abandoned buildings have worn off because of how many times I've been here. I should also mention that in all my time visiting this place with my friends, we have never seen anyone else there. It was kind of like our place. Tonight, I was chilling with a mate at my house. We were both going to separate universities in a few weeks, so we were feeling quite reflective and started talking about our childhoods and in particular, our many trips to these abandoned buildings. Eventually, although it was late, curiosity got the better of us and we decided to hop in his car and drive the short journey to his place. When we got there, it was pitch black, and we had absolutely no gear, except for the torches on our phones. He'd even come straight from work, so he was still in his formal suit. We arrived at the place and began to walk around, looking in all the buildings and recounting stories of the summers we had spent here. We were talking carelessly and loudly, in hindsight, this was probably a mistake. We were quite deep in the complex when it started. A loud tapping sound. The sound of metal on metal. It startled us, and we both jumped. In an effort to calm ourselves down, we told each other it was probably just the wind. It didn't take us long to work out that this couldn't be the case. The tapping has a rhythm to it, but it was one that would keep on changing. A few times it would even have a recognizable tune such as Queen, We Will Rock You. At this point me and my mate were terrified. We started to slowly, as quietly as possible, go back the way we had come and towards where his car was parked. We had only made it a few meters when I accidentally stepped in a bit of medium duty foam board lying on the floor. It snapped with what felt like the loudest sound in the world. At this point, the tapping abruptly stopped, and everything went silent. We started to creep away again. We'd only made it a bit further when something I will never forget, but I wish I could, happened. We heard a voice. It sounded mad. It was loud and clear enough to hear. A man's voice. And it was speaking English. But what it was saying didn't make any sense just a random jumble of words and phrases blurted out with any pause. At this point we both broke. We sprinted towards the way out, surpassing the urge to scream like kids. As we're running to the entrance we ran past another building, and as we ran past, quite loudly this time, we heard another voice. It was a man's voice again but definitely different from the first one. This one saying a similar assortment of nothing, but we didn't stop to listen. We sprinted full tilt till we got to his car, hurled ourselves in and screeched off. We got back to mine and practically hugged each other for the rest of the night. It might not sound that creepy now, but something about those voices coming from the abandoned buildings put fear in the animal part of my brain. I hope you guys enjoyed reading this. I know I didn't really enjoy living it, it put a weird end to the place otherwise associated with a good childhood memory. I don't know if I'll ever want to go back.
when I was in the 8th to 10th grade, I was extremely involved in a small building server. The average age was probably 15 to 17, and I joined a group of builders and Skype with them every weekend for hours. We all became close fast and trusted each other enough that we followed each other on Instagram. I became particularly close with one of the builders in my group. His name was Peter. Peter was in the same grade as me and we ended up texting quite a bit. I heard rumors that Peter might have had a crush on me. He denied them, which I found laughable because it was the internet and I brushed it off. Everything was fine for a while until something began to feel off. When I talked to him, I was starting to constantly catch him telling me small lies. This bothered me so I figured it was time to distance myself from Peter and I stopped talking to him. Cut to a few months later and no contact with Peter and out of the blue he texts me and said he's going to possibly transfer to my high school so that he can get into an in-state tuition for college. Peter's plan is to somehow live completely alone and support himself while in high school. My stomach drops when I read the text, and I know this feels very, very off. I try to calm and tell myself that his plan is crazy. I tell him that it's oddly convenient that he chose my random suburb. Peter insists that his plan will work, and it's just a coincidence that he's going to be going to my high school. I'm trying to call Peter's bluff, and hoping he's just screwing with me, because I cut him off. Peter says he bought the plane tickets already, and is going to stay in my town and visit some high schools in the area. Fear washes over me, and I realize that Peter definitely has some very unhealthy attachment to me. Peter was not bluffing. To my horror, he posted a picture on Snapchat at the airport. Peter asked to meet up while he's there, and I of course decline. Later, I see on his Snapchat story that he's taking a tour of my high school. Peter is taking lots of videos and pictures, probably hoping that I can see. Luckily I'm stuck at home with pneumonia. I spend the next few days on edge and afraid that he's going to ring my doorbell at any moment. Luckily he was not smart enough to find out where I live, and he flies home and doesn't follow his plan. The baffling part is that none of my old group on Minecraft server thought he was doing anything creepy. I felt like I was going crazy for thinking that this was weird. I thought my rejection for this meetup and continued no contact would be the end of it, but about two years later, and I just committed to my dream college, I still stupidly followed Peter on social media because I wanted to make sure if he was coming to my area. Once again, Peter did. I see him posing in front of the library at my college with the caption saying, Transferring here is definitely the move. Cut to a few months later and Peter finds out that I had a boyfriend and directly contacts me for the first time in two years. He starts asking strange questions like, Will he protect you? I shouldn't have answered, but for some reason I did. I finally blocked him and stopped following him on his social media out of fear. He has not tried to contact me since definitely made some mistakes because I was young and scared, and he had others telling me that it was not a big deal. So Peter, let's not meet. I had one of those moments recently where a lot of things came together in my brain to make sense of an event that my child mind couldn't properly comprehend at the time. So. My mom was born and raised in the UK, but she's of South Asian descent. Since I'm mixed, she tries really hard to make sure I'm in touch with my culture. This meant that as a child, I made a lot of frequent visits back home. It's like every summer I can remember was spent there, and then it just suddenly stopped after this incident. My mom's family back home live in an extremely rural part of the country. There's a lot of poverty surrounding our family home, so we rarely left our relatively nice part of the village. I was never allowed out to explore, and coming from the concrete jungle that is London, I was always so curious. I'm going to explain what happened on this one 
particular day that I remember experiencing it. Then I'll explain what I failed to realize at the time. I was eight then. One of my uncles from a neighboring village would often visit with his children and when they did my mom would let me go with them to a small hut-like shop that sold sweets and snacks like 15 minutes away from the family home. My cousins were 11 and 19, both male, and it was broad daylight. To get to the shop, we walked through a small DIY road and on both sides is what I would call the jungle. It was basically just a lot of trees and bushes as far as you could see. You can't really see anything beyond the trees, it's just a lot of greenery. I'm mixed with East Asian and I definitely get my looks from my dad's side, so being an obvious foreigner in a rural part of back home meant that I was pretty used to strangers staring and asking me questions. I was also used to creepy men that would tell me I was beautiful because I have pale skin. My mum warned me about these men, and I made sure I knew to stay away from them. So, the road to the hut was paved with creepy people making creepy comments, and my cousins basically telling them to leave me alone in less pleasant terms. There was also a group of young guys. Some of them had motorbikes, and some were just chilling. One of them waved at me. They seemed friendly enough, and I had met so many people that my mom was convinced I must remember from the last time that I had zero recollection of, so I just waved back and went about my day. Once we got to the hut, we immediately started losing our self-control with the snacks. The owner was super friendly, and he let us try a bunch of the sweet missions he had, and he also had colorful ice cream for the first time. I distinctly remember being really excited because my mom and one of the ladies that worked as a cook both loved to cook for ice cream, so I thought it would be a nice surprise for them. I asked for three and the nice guy gave me four, and so my hands were full and they were quickly melting. He told me to run, 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 go home, quickly, quickly. I told my cousins I would get a running start and once they finished they could catch me up. I would still be in their line of sight, plus it was daylight and it was a busy road. I started running back. There were a few older aunties stood at the top of the road, and something about their presence gave me a sense of security. I felt a lot safer knowing that they were there, paired with the fact that my cousins were able to see me clearly. I felt comfortable enough to just walk back leisurely, minding my own business, eating my ice cream. I passed the group of guys, and the one that waved at me came over. He said I was X's niece, right? X being my uncle. And he jokingly took one of my ice creams and said she got an ice cream for Mama. Mama means uncle in our language. And so I just assumed he was a friend of my uncle's. He asked me where I arrived and how I was finding the country. He was so friendly and didn't look like the stereotypical creep. When I said I was going home, he said, why don't you let your uncle take you? You can ride on my motorbike. I think that's when something clicked in my mind that maybe he wasn't the friendly uncle that I thought he was. It's also when I realized I was pretty much circled in and was surrounded by the group. It's also when I realized I couldn't see my cousins or the group of old ladies, which also meant that they probably couldn't see me. I wish I could explain in words how helpless and afraid I was. I had all the threats in the world explained to me by my mom, in a country where I knew I was vulnerable and had to be cautious, and I still managed to find myself in a dangerous situation. Luckily, my cousins came running and shouting, <laughs> partially because I was their responsibility. And the guys ran off into the jungle. This creeped me out because there was nothing in the jungle. It was just trees as far as I could see. And I knew that it would be nearly impossible to find them and all of that. 
We caused quite the scene, and the villagers seemed to react as if they were already on edge. When we told my family what happened, I was basically on house arrest, and my mom refused me out of her sight. I was pretty shook up about the whole situation, and so honestly, I was kind of grateful for that. I put it down to my paranoia, but at the time, I would get overwhelming feelings of being watched. Our village is quite small, like amongst them it's an everyone knows everyone type of village. My uncle is also a big community figure and he's very well known amongst the villagers, which is why the men probably put two and two together that I was his niece. Having foreign family is usually a pretty big deal and having a niece that is mixed race was also a very big deal, so I'm sure word got around. He realized that there were a group of men on motorbikes who would frequently go past our house. And they weren't anyone we would have known. It's creepy to think about it now, the lengths they were going to. A couple of days before we were due to fly back, I had my second, last, and worst encounter with this particular friendly uncle. It was night. It was like every other night where we would play board games or card games in the front room. Because it was so hot, I went to my bedroom and I was playing on my Nintendo DS. What a throwback. When I sat out the corner of my eye, something at the window, staring directly at me. It was him. The worst part is he had the most creepy, sick, and twisted smile I've ever seen put a finger to his lips, but I did the literal opposite and started screaming hysterically. I had been on edge since the ice cream incident, so what might like seem like an overreaction was just my natural response. I can't really tell you what happened next because no one has ever told me. My very large uncle and his very large friends are not known to be the friendliest of people. But I was told he dealt with it and that the creepy man would never bother me again. We recently received a wedding film from one of my cousin's weddings and put on part of the film was her leaving to get to the venue and I noticed that the jungle was no longer there. It had basically been cut down. For the first time I could see beyond the greenery. That's when my mom explained to me that my uncle had it cut down not long after that particular visit because of the head cutters. My entire life I've wondered what would have happened to me if I had gotten on that motorbike, but now I know with reasonable certainty what his intentions were. During that time, a gang had been kidnapping beggar children. It took a while for the village to realize because it's not unusual for beggar children to go missing. When we were there, people were vaguely aware it was becoming a trend. A couple of months later, a head was found. It became known in our village, but people tried to keep it quiet to avoid getting a bad name. The problem went away once a lot of the greening was cut down so there was nowhere left to hide, but it's also when they realize the magnitude of what happened. The weird thing is, I've known about the head cutters for a while. I knew it was something that occurred in our village, but for some reason until recently I never put two and two together. But now that I have, I think often about what nearly happened to me but more importantly what happened to a handful of children in our little village. I think about the fact that beyond our relatively small circle, no one thinks about them. No one is haunted by their deaths. So, to the creepy uncle with the motorbike, let's not meet again. I wish the children had never met you, and I hope no one ever has the misfortune of meeting you again.
Thanks for checking out my read of I Was Almost Kidnapped and Beheaded as a Child. My name is Ryan Joseph Murphy, and you can find me on my channel, Welcome to the Horror Show. It's a digital horror anthology in the vein of Tales from the Crypt and the Twilight Zone. You can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Your Horror Show. We'll be doing a new Campfire Tales season for the spooky season ahead, starting in a couple of weeks. Please tune in, subscribe, and thanks so much for Jensen for allowing me to be on his channel. Have a good one.